I lost money until I understood smart money management. What do I mean by that? Well, it comes down to position sizing. You've probably heard me say that, you know, entries and exits matter, but position sizing is really where things kind of tend to get amplified. And you know probably all too well when you're too big in a position and it moves against you, you kind of find that out the hard way. I'm, I'm sorry to say, I know I did. So I was making money. The problem was is because my position size was all over the place, it would knock me down to break even and then into losing, uh, you know, money, which sucked because I didn't have a lot to start with. So for this video is for newer traders who are starting out or who are struggling and trying to find the consistency. You need to kind of think in terms of consistent bet sizes. We talked about that. You can go look that video up. So what I needed to do was to find a way to enter the trade with enough position on so that as the trade would unfold, I could actually add more to the position, but then adjust my protective stops. Trade management and what you do inside the trade is probably the most undercovered area of trading. That's why this coming Wednesday, I'm going to do a live stream. I took a poll and said, would anyone like to know how to do this, say, via a webinar or a live stream? Or don't do anything at all because you always make a presumption. So anyway, about three quarters of the folks said, you know, do a live stream. So I never did one before. I'm going to try it. It'll be this Wednesday, nine o'clock Pacific time. You can see it under the live, you know, button. And I'm going to talk. It's not going to be long because I'm awfully busy. And uh, I'm thinking maybe 30 minutes or so with a little Q&A, but it's going to be very clear and concise. This way you can kind of see what's going on. It's a lot easier to do and I have longer format. If you don't want to be there, then you won't miss anything. So at the end of the day, my position sizing was all over the place. Here's one of the reasons why. Compliance. In those days, again, stocks were trading in eighths, but there was also an odd lot fee, like a penalty that you had to pay. And it was another 25 or 50 bucks that you had to pay if you bought less than 100 shares. Can you imagine this? So they were, they were getting hammered. Every, <laughs> I was getting hammered every which way because it was like I had to pay an eighth of a commission to get in. I had to pay at least an eighth you know, to get out. The bid-ask spread was an eighth to a quarter. And then if you bought less than 100 shares, they fined you on top of it with this odd lot fee, right? Or a round lot being 100 shares, right? So odd lot fee was 25 or 50 bucks. And so now you're like, oh my God, I almost have to do 75 cents to break even. You see why you couldn't scalp in those days. So I just said, okay, well, that's out of the question. I could save myself that duress and that money by, by thinking a little bit longer term. So what I did was I devised a methodology, and this was before I learned about ATR, on how to scale into my winners and adjust my protective stops along the way. I'm going to show you bits and pieces of that. It's very, very lengthy. It's, it's more like something that I teach, but I, want, I know a lot of people are struggling, and they don't know how to hand, handle the trade once they're in there. And I've heard one story the other day where someone bought like the stock at 20, it went to 27 and their original, they kept their original protective stop at 19. I was like, you can't do that. Then I hear other folks who kind of get into the trade, they buy something at 20, it goes to 22 and then they put their, you know, risking uh, a dollar. So their original stop is at like 19. But then once they start making money, they're in such fear about losing that money they, you know, at 22, they put their protective stop at like $21.90. You know what I mean? So, so again, a lot of this stuff is emotional, but I'm going to walk you through it. You can do it alongside of me if you know your statistics, you know, you know your expected values and this and that. But this thing really helped me um, manage the trade better, right? Because that's, that's, that's what we're talking about now. We're not talking about the pre-trade and the post-trade. We're talking about managing the trade. And I deliberately traded smaller so that I didn't lose as much. Why? Well, because you have to remember, if I lost $500, then I was getting, you know, that was 10% of my account when I was starting out. Now, I've got all the money in the world, so I'm not really worried about it. But it was much harder to get consistent when I was all over the place. And so I'm going to show you how I divided up my money and... um took advantage of leverage, of course, and exactly like the rules that I followed when I started. Um, it's not 
admittedly, it's not going to be for everybody. Um, if you feel frustration and that bothers you, you this might not work for you. But it's not. It's more about risk management in per se rather than look. Let's go looking at a bunch of charts. We're not going to be looking at a bunch of charts. So if that's what you want to do, don't waste your time. I, I don't want to waste your time um, on any of that stuff. But until I understood smart money management, my results were all over the place. And what did that mean? Like my, if you, you, I've always said you have to trade your equity curve. So my equity would shoot up because I, I had a decent position on, but then I'd have another position on it would work against me. And then it would wipe out the gains that I had on this other winner that I was still in. But then I felt deflated. I was like, what's the point of this? I'm, I'm in a trade. I made a bunch of money here. I put this other trade on and it quickly worked against me because I didn't understand about how to adjust for volatility. And, you know, that was that was certainly part of it. It wasn't all of it, but it was certainly part of it. And take into account share prices and take into account margins like all of that stuff had to go into my calculus because, again, I was working with, you know, five, six thousand dollars, which, you know, meant there was very, very little breathing room. You know what I'm saying? So trade, you know, money management now is kind of like one of my fortes. And I think, again, it's not, it's not, it's, you can't sell it, right? Because it's not like, look at this new, look at this scalping pattern or, or whatever, which induces you to think like it has to be about the, you know, about the chart. Making money is about the trader. It's not about the chart. You might feel differently because you're just not that at that level of, I don't know what I want to say about it. What is it? Maturity? You haven't been around the block enough to really see, but the trade, the trader, him or herself, is really what's most compelling more than the chart. Um, anyway, if you like this video, check out this one here.